All right, thanks for staying with us. Uh, so she was done his part, and now it's yeah. left to Ijama and I uh, for, for the rest for of the, the show. For the long haul. Yes, I, I'm sure, of course, might be back sometime during uh, the rest of the yeah. show, or maybe not. But now we're going to get into the nitty-gritty. Today on the program being the first in the series, we're going to be kicking off with a look at some context to all of this. Mm -hmm. What's the background to elections in Nigeria? What do we know about previous elections? Are we getting better at conducting elections? Are we getting better at participating in elections? Are we getting better at accepting results? Are we getting better at pursuing litigation without violence? All of this we're taking a look at today, along with some other related issues to this historical context. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that, uh, we've been joined first in Lagos here by a uh, professor of law, Professor Akio Ibodi. Of course, uh, Professor Ibodi was also uh, the vice chancellor at the point of the University of Adwekiti. Prof, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. You're most welcome. Uh, welcome. Sitting beside Prof, uh, of course, is uh, Mrs. Juliet Benite, who is the director for programs of the Institute for National Transformation. It's my pleasure. Thank you very thank much. You. And uh, from our Abuja studios, uh, I believe uh, we don't have that studio yet, but I'm sure we'll see it in a moment. We expect to have uh, from our Abuja oh, studios. There yes, there it is. Yeah. We expect to have from our studios Mr. Oluwale Osaze Uzi, who is the Director of Voter Education at INEC. Thank you very much for being with us, Mr. Uzi. Then, of course, uh, Professor Chidi Odikalu, that's him. That's Professor Odikalu, of course, in the white T-shirt. He's the former chairman of the National Human Rights Commission. Prof, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, sir. And then Professor Tahir Maman, Vice Chancellor of Abayes University in Abuja is also there. Thank you, Prof, for being with us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Now, uh, you might say quite an intimidating panel. I know. I know. <laughs> we know the professor. <laughs> yes, I was I'm intimidated. intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> worry not, sir. Um, worry not. No, worry not. Yes, I'm sure you're safe. I mean, these are yeah. all. Um, Prof, I, if we take a look at... Um, the context to our elections. Uh, people say every time we come around to elections, there's, yes, and it's, it's, there's a feeling of deja vu uh, all the time. No matter how much it looks like things have changed, they seem to be the same. There's a lot of tension, there's a lot of anxiety, people are apprehensive and all that. Now, but have we, in your view, coming from, let's not go too far back, but let's start from 1999 to date. Uh, have we progressed? Have we improved in some of the indices of our elections? You know, like Alphonse Kerr uh, once observed, the more things change, the more they remain the same. Uh, so uh, you might say we're going around in circles, like Baba's chair. But maybe we've made some remarkable progress uh, in terms of uh, conduct. Uh, we hope that we will not have late arrivals of uh, election officials. Uh, we hope also that uh, the elections will be free and fair and credible. And people have now added another adjective, transparent. <laughs> so that uh, what you see is what you get. It's like uh, Humphrey Nwosu used to say, no wuru wuru, no mago mago. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've made quantitative progress. But in terms of quality, I think the jury is still out on that. As you know, I was an observer uh, at Madagascar at the last elections. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, when I was there, I was thinking that Nigeria uh, will improve on what the Madagascar people did. Mm -hmm. And all eyes were on me as a Nigerian. Uh, some of them co-observers are in the country now as we speak. And so they were saying, taunting me all the time, what is going to happen in February? And, and I said, well, uh, Nigeria will live up to its billing as the largest uh, democracy on the African continent. Now, uh, the largest number of educated people. And that Nigeria has uh, a long history to learn from. Nigerians had been voting since 1922. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, for the legislative council, mm -hmm. not full franchise, mm -hmm. but at least uh, we're not new mm -hmm. to uh, elections. Mm -hmm. And uh, under the colonial government, we had elections that caused ripples 
yeah. uh, in many circles. Because of representation and all. Not just representation, the colonial power. Yeah. Mm. I wanted to keep a tab mm. on the process. I remember uh, even the 1959 elections. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a, a young kid preparing to go to secondary school. And uh, we, our ears were glued to the uh, radio. And when the phrase, Bakudaya, stuck in my memory, mm -hmm. uh, those who did not score well in the election. But then we had a fine crop of politicians, yeah. public mm -hmm. office mm -hmm. seekers, uh, people like Chief Obafemi Awolowo, mm -hmm. who had uh, his posters read, A Man with a Plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, freedom for all, life more abundant. I still understood all those things uh, at my 12 years of age. So it was exciting. But then the elections were set right. up in such a way mm -hmm. that power did not go to the more progressive That's elements. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the British were so much afraid of uh, the radicalism of uh, what you call the progressive. Somebody like Obafemi Awolo. Mm -hmm. He was schemed out of contention. Mm -hmm. And again, it was done in uh, by uh, Nam Diazikewe. Oh, okay, Prof, I'm going to let you, I'm going to put you on pause. Um, I know you're giving us that historical background. We'll take a break, a brief one, and then we'll come back and expand the conversation to Abuja and also to Ms. Benitede. Thank you.